Hi, beautiful friends and bookish fam. My name is Brittany. This is Rescues and Reads. Thank you so much for joining me here today for another bookmas video. If we're new, welcome. I'm so glad to have you. And if you are a returning subscriber, as always, I appreciate your continued support. Thank you for returning to another video. Today, we are here to see if I have read the 76 best books of the past decade, according to Goodreads. So back in November, Goodreads released an article saying Goodreads members 76 most popular books of the past decade. So basically from 2013 to 2023. While digging through the stacks here at Goodreads World Headquarters, a random question occurred to the editorial team. What are the most popular books of the past decade? The books collected below represent the most popular books on Goodreads in the past 10 years, dialing back to 2013. The books here are ranked in order of overall popularity as determined by which title Goodreads members have marked as read, currently reading, or want to read. So basically the books that have essentially been shelved the most times. So I'm going to record my screen here so you can see what I'm seeing and we're just going to kind of go through and talk about the books. Now obviously there are a bunch that I have to go through so I'm not going to be giving synopsis. I'm overall going to just kind of give you what my feelings were about the story and if I haven't read it talk to you about if I will or will not and things like that. So let's jump in. Okay, so the very first book listed here is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. We all know by now that I've read this book. I loved it. It is one of my favorite books of all time and easy five stars. So yes, I've read it. I've also read The Girl on the Train by Paula Hawkins. Now, I think I might have given that book a four star when I read it. It hasn't necessarily left a lasting impression, but I do remember enjoying it when I read it. It definitely has the unreliable narrator thing going on where the main character, because of alcohol, is not really reliable, which has since been really overdone. But like back when this book came out, it wasn't as overdone and I do remember enjoying it. Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. I read that and I remember enjoying it. All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Doerr. Now that is a very popular World War II historical fiction that I have not read and I don't think that I'm going to read it. The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. I haven't actually read anything by Matt Haig. His books just do not intrigue me. I actually haven't heard the best things about the Midnight Library. It's never really been on my radar. I don't plan to read it. Ugly Love by Colleen Hoover I did read and I loved it. I'm gonna be honest that's one of my favorite Colleen Hoovers so it is what it is. Educated by Tara Westover. I had that on my TBR for so long and then ultimately decided that I didn't want to read it. So I unhauled it for my virtual TBR. I'm just not a nonfiction girly unless it's like true crime. So I tried to read it. It didn't work out. Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I of course read it and loved it. Normal People by Sally Rooney. That's another one that I've never read and I really don't have any interest in reading. The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. One of my favorite World War II historical fictions of all time. Another easy five stars. And if you love World War II historical fiction, really, really, really need to read that book. The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck by Mark. Manson. Now this is one that has certainly been going around and even though this is a nonfiction, I'm not really opposed to reading this. I've heard a lot of amazing things about it. If you have read this please comment down below and let me know what your thoughts are because this is one that I might be swayed to add to my want to read shelf. Becoming by Michelle Obama. Have not read it. Will not read it. Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Of course I read it and I enjoyed it. It's not my favorite. It's probably my least favorite of her books that are historical in nature but of course it was beautifully written and well told. Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine by Gail Honeyman. I did read that and quite enjoyed it. Atomic Habits by James Clear. This is definitely a nonfiction that I really have no interest in reading. I know that it's very, very popular and I think that it's helped a lot of people, but I have no interest in it. Similarly, The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt. I really have no interest in that one at all. The Tattooist of Auschwitz by Heather Morris. This was actually one that I owned physically and it was on my TBR and for some reason I just decided that I did not want to read it, which is weird because I do like World War II historical fiction. It's kind of interesting that it's here on this list. I had no idea that it was that popular, so maybe I need to put it back on my radar. A Little Life by Hanya Yanagawa. Hara. This is one that I actually mentioned in a video that I did talking about book talk, popular books that I have no interest in reading. I still have no interest in reading this. This is essentially trauma porn for several hundred pages and I really just don't care to read it. Big Little Lies by Leanne Moriarty. I have definitely read that and I really enjoyed it. Same with Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmus. Now this is one that I really enjoyed, not for the plot because there really is no plot, but because of the characters and because of the quotability of it and the messages within it. So it's definitely a slower moving book, but I absolutely love some of the content of the book. The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. That was a really, really popular book and I just never had any real interest in reading it. So I haven't. Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Levin. I've actually recently talked about this book. It's not my favorite. I thought it had a lot of potential. I really loved the way that it was overall written. Didn't love the direction that she took the story and I didn't like one of the main characters hardly at all. So I have very complicated feelings about this book. I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. I'm actually really intrigued by that one even though I really have no connection to Jeanette McCurdy. I never watched any of the shows that she was in and I don't have a personal interest nor am I invested in her. But I've heard just some really amazing things 
things about the story overall and it makes me intrigued to read it. The Great Alone by Kristen Hanna. That's one of my favorite Kristen Hannas and I will always recommend that book. The Spanish Love Deception by Elena Armas is definitely on my want to read shelf so I will get to that one eventually. When Breath Becomes Air by Paul Kalanithi. So that was one that I was never going to pick up but it actually satisfied a reading challenge to read a book that was published posthumously so I did read that one. Anxious People by Frederick Bachman is one that I had but I ultimately unhauled it. I just don't think Frederick Bachman is the author for me so I ultimately did not even try to read this one. Born a Crime by Trevor Noah. That's another nonfiction that I've heard amazing things about but again I don't watch Trevor Noah. I really have no investment in him or interest in him as a person so I don't really think that I would care to read his nonfiction. A Gentleman in Moscow by Amar Tolls. This is another one that I had and ultimately decided that I just was not excited to read so I unhauled it. The Four Winds by Kristen Hanna. Nobody's surprised here that I read it and loved it. Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng. Now this is one that was certainly on my radar. This and I'll just go ahead and jump really quickly down here to Everything I Never Told You by Celeste Ng. Both of those were on my radar. I think I owned Everything I Never Told You at one point and I just kind of decided that I really didn't care to read them so I haven't read them and they are no longer on my TBR. Before We Were Yours by Lisa Wingate I did read and really enjoyed. Uh, Such a Fun Age I did not read and really don't have any interest in reading. Same with American Dirt by Janine Cummins and Pachinko by Minjin Lee although I have heard really amazing things about that one. Hail Mary by Andy Weir is currently on my TBR because I read The Martian and I've heard amazing things about Project Hail Mary and so I think I'm going to go ahead and give it a try even though I wasn't necessarily as blown away by The Martian as a lot of people were. The Husband's Secret by Leanne Moriarty I did read. Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel was another one that I had and I tried to read and I just couldn't get into it so I took it off my TBR and I unhauled the book. Beautiful World Where Are You by Sally Rooney. I just for some reason have no interest in Sally Rooney as an author like none of her books are of interest to me so I probably will not be reading that one. Heartstopper. I will not be reading that one. I have no interest in it whatsoever and Carrie Soto is Back by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Of course I read it and I enjoyed it. The Alice Network by Kate Quinn. An absolutely phenomenal historical fiction book. Kate Quinn is quickly becoming one of my favorite historical fiction authors. I absolutely love this book. If you have not read it and you are into World War II historical fiction, especially those that cover like badass spies in World War II, female spies, highly recommend. Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. I did read and it was fine. Red Rising by Pierce Brown. I do plan on rereading this one, but I have already read it. Underground Railroad by Colson Whitehead. Have not read that one. And Crying in H Mart by Michelle Zahner. I haven't read that one either, but I have heard a lot of really great things about it. Untamed by Glennon Doyle. Glennon Doyle is a big name in like self-improvement and motivational speaking. And I listened to her podcast and I actually enjoyed the episodes that I listened to of her podcast, but I just don't think I really need to read her book. And again, nonfiction, just not my thing. Bear Town by Frederick Bachman. Unpopular opinion, but I did not love that story like everybody else seemed to. So unfortunately, that's one of the ones that kind of made me realize that Frederick Bachman is really not the author for me. So I did read it though. Another Sally Rooney, Conversations with Friends. She is a very, very popular author. Makes me wonder what's wrong with me that I don't want to read her. Comment down below and let me know your thoughts on Sally Rooney. On Earth, We're Briefly Gorgeous by Ocean Wong. I don't think I've ever heard of that book. That's the first one that we've come across that I'm really not familiar with at all. So of course I haven't read it. Crazy Rich Asians by Kevin Kwan. Now I've heard a lot of great things about that one, but it's just one that I've never had any interest in reading. The Giver of Stars by Jojo Moyes. I have not read that one. Remarkably Bright Creatures by Shelby Van Pelt. I enjoyed that one immensely. And Marcellus is one of my favorite literary characters of all time. I highly recommend. The Lost Apothecary by Sarah Penner. I did read and it was okay. It was fine. Before the Coffee Gets Cold by Toshikazu Kawaguchi. I have not read, but I've heard a lot of people talk about it recently. The Testaments by Margaret Atwood. I have not read. I have not read a single Margaret Atwood. I don't think I'm going to. My Year of Rest and Relaxation by Otessa Moshfig. I have not read and have no intention to. Talking to Strangers by Malcolm Gladwell. Another nonfiction I have no interest in reading. Orphan Train by Christina Baker Klein. I could be potentially persuaded to add that one. I think I'm kind of indifferent to that one. Americana by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. I have not read that one. Same with The Dutch House by Anne Patchett and Homegoing by Yaj Yossi. Although I may be reading a Yaj Yossi this year to satisfy a reading challenge prompt. So let me know if Homegoing is what I should read by her. An American Marriage by Tiara Jones. I did read that and I didn't really enjoy it all that much. Between the World and Me by Ta-Nehisi Coates. I have not read. I also have not read Clara and the Sun by Kazuo Ishiguru. Maybe You Should Talk to Someone by Lori Gottlieb. I did have that on my radar. I owned it and ultimately just decided not to read it. It was not for me. My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. I started that book and I DNF that book at around 50%. It wasn't doing a whole lot for me and I feel like I got most of what I wanted from the story within the first 50% and I didn't really feel the need to continue with it. A Promised Land by Barack Obama. Have not read it. Will not read it. 
Mad Honey by Jodi Picoult. I have read that one and I did really enjoy it even though it was very political overall and some of the topics that were covered but still very glad that I read it. Sea of Tranquility by Emily St. John Mandel. I have not read that one. Demon Copperhead by Barbara Kingsolver. I am currently reading that one. It's not going great. And we are at the final ones. We have Spare by Prince Harry. I will definitely not be reading that one. Girl, Woman, Other by Bernardine Evaristo. I have never even heard of that one so I haven't read it. Cloud Cuckoo Land by Anthony Doerr. I have not read. And Killers of the Flower Moon by David Grand. That is actually one that's been on my radar for quite some time but I haven't officially added it to my TBR. I don't know why. I just have never added it to my TBR. It is definitely one that I would consider reading. There is now an adaptation that is coming out that has Leonardo DiCaprio in it that has got me really really intrigued. Okay so if my math is correct I have only read 36% of the most popular books of the past decade which I'm actually quite pleased with because I typically don't end up reading a lot of the super popular books or more of the literary books that are always so hyped and highly regarded and I'm definitely not a nonfiction person and I'm especially not a memoir person. And so a good chunk of what I haven't read from this list are books that I already knew that I would never have read like the memoirs, the nonfiction, and the more literary things. I really honestly didn't think that my reading tastes were going to align with the 76 best books of the decade. So this was very interesting to me. Please comment down below and let me know how many of these books you have read or if you've made it to the end of this video and you are not feeling chatty go ahead and just leave me a check mark emoji if you have read quite a few or an X emoji if you have not read hardly at all. I would love to know and as always if you like this video or if you just like me please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. I am participating in book miss meeting from December 1st through the 25th. You should be seeing one video upload from me a day and if you do not want to miss any of the content please be sure to hit that subscribe button down below. Y'all know that I love connecting with you in all of my videos or on any of my social media platforms which I always leave linked down below along with any books that I may talk about in this video except for today because I'm not linking all the 76 best books of the decade. Until next time y'all, bye.